Good afternoon guys and welcome to today's video. So what we're going to be doing today is installing the Shy Performance uh, diff brace and pretty much all it's supposed to be doing is bracing the axle tubes to create or not to create but to make sure that they're strong and there's no rotation going on or anything like that uh, when we're launching the car. Behind me is my 2007 GT500 making just around 700 wheel horsepower. So last time on my on the uh, last time on the track I was out, noticed some issues, and I'm trying to make sure I can do everything preventative wise to make sure we don't continue those issues. So if you didn't see last video, we went ahead and installed the Eaton True Track differential into the car. It had one previously. Um, I broke it. Not necessarily Eaton's fault. Definitely something I did. I used wrong. Uh, used some. Well, go ahead and check that video out, and you'll see what the damage was. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and flip you guys around, and we're gonna show you. Uh, I'm gonna show you pretty much what's going on. So what we have here is the uh shy performance brace and this essentially so this part goes around your diff housing and this goes in the front of your diff housing and it pretty much goes on like this and uh well i'll show you guys what it looks like when we're down there but pretty much that's what we're gonna do so step one i just i stole this thing apart from earlier so we got to go ahead and stick our diff cover back on if you're installing a different diff cover different style um, now it's time to do it because the way that diff brace sits is going to go over top of this. So we're going to go ahead and throw this on real quick. Um, just got to run a quick bead of silicone right around here. I'm just using black silicone. Works out. I've had no problems with it. Um, throw it around there. We're going to put it on the car. As you can see, it's kind of in pieces at the moment. And uh, once that's on, then we'll go ahead and proceed. I know I'm going to have to drill some holes in this thing, so... We'll go ahead and hop onto there and just start doing one step at a time. So first up, we're going to go ahead and get this taken care of. Step one is complete. Pretty much we just threaded these in until they bottomed out. Pretty easy. So it says on here, if, uh, if these things are present, they're called axle counterweights apparently. Or sorry, the axle dampers, which apparently are on GT500s and some V6s. It's kind of weird, but so if these are present to go ahead and remove these. So there's one here and one here and they will not be reused. So that's the next step we're gonna go ahead and do. Once that is done, looks like, uh, well, we'll just kind of proceed. There's also supposed to be two holes, one here and one on the other side. On my car, they are not present, so I'm gonna to have to be drilling those in, which will be interesting. Not gonna do that for a little bit, though. I wanna make sure that everything is lined up properly first. So let's go ahead and remove these two bad boys next. Should be pretty easy. All right, so I went ahead and there's a spacer on that relocation bracket. On this side, it's located right there. I uh, went ahead and popped it out on the other side. There's not one on this side, sorry. But uh, so that's clear. Popped out the bolt right here. So now all I got to do is line up the relocation bracket, or not the relocation bracket, the brace with this and figure out where I need to drill my holes. I'm also going to need to drill some more holes on that side, which is going to be irritating, but we're going to get it done. So that's currently where we're at. So I made a little bit of progress here, as you can see. That's pretty much how the brace goes on. So we have one bolt right there. Um, brace, bolt up there. 
one on the other side and then it goes across now right now my current issue is it seems like so this is i'm not going to blame shy or shy for this pretty sure it's because my initial holes that i drilled into the diff were slightly out of line it's very difficult to do because if there's no holes it's at an angle so when it slides in it's going to move a little bit but that's beside the point um those two bolts are fighting each other right there on the end let me get a little closer so what's happening is the big bolt back there its hole is fighting the bolt right there and that hole so they seem to be just a little bit off um pretty much all you got to do is widen that hole a little bit i'm gonna use the dremel tool we're just gonna move it up because i mean i really don't have any other choice to get this thing on here and i do want it on here but this is pretty much how it's going to be set up and then our bracket's going to go right here i think so i got this uh i got this whole brace second hand saving me a couple bucks probably not worth it in the long run because i think uh if i i think i'm missing a few pieces here and there mainly spacers um this one's what was used in the bmr relocation brackets right here which works out for me um but i'm pretty sure there's supposed to be a bunch more of these that are supposed to go on these bolts or a different spacer altogether because there's a lip right here so i think what i'm going to wind up doing is actually taking these these are unused these are if you don't have any lower control arm relocation brackets or anything and uh I'm going to cut this up and we're just going to use this as a spacer all around here and it's raining that's awesome okay so some progress has been made went ahead and got the two end bolts on right there as you can see they're now pretty much as tight as i can get them i can't really get a torque wrench in those angles big one obviously but not that small one when again you got the top ones done as you can see right there uh so the, those are tightened down as best as i can get as well which is pretty tight Lastly, this one's tightened down, and uh, so they say in the directions I need to drill two holes right here and put on the final piece. So I'm going to do the top one. I'm not going to do the bottom one because I don't know about you guys, but the way that this sits in here, I don't think I'm physically going to have anywhere near enough room to actually get a bolt through here and uh, not just run right into that bar on the back side. So we're just going to do the top one. That one has two over there. This one's gonna have two right here. So it's not great, but it's good enough. I don't really have a way. Yeah, I'm like, yeah, I don't really see any way of getting a bolt in here because this bar just comes up right in the way. So it is what it is, nothing crazy, but uh, yeah, let's have the top one in. That's one I got to drill. Something I didn't read and understand to comprehend, or rather, something I didn't fully comprehend yesterday is, so for here, what I'm supposed to do is put the uh, bolts on here and they all go on they get torqued down to 25 foot pounds so we're going to torque all these down to 25 they were remember tight but not super tight fingers crossed this doesn't cause any leaks i doubt it uh the gasket sealer is pretty malleable and uh, it was definitely tight it's enough to just ooze around all the edges so we should have a good seal so what i'm going to go ahead and do is tighten all these guys down to 25 foot pounds we're going to drill that hole i need to run out and grab a bolt because I was supposed to have been supplied with it. I have literally everything. I don't know what these two go for. I think it's for something else. Unrelated. Literally everything except for the bolt that goes on the end of this. I don't know what happened to it. Uh, I probably got it when I was shipped. But I just, I don't know what I did with it. So I'm going to run to the hardware store and get something that fits that. It's a, uh, I think it's a three, three, I don't know. I have to look at the thing again. Doesn't matter. So that's what we're going to go ahead and do. So I'm going to tighten all these guys down real quick. Uh, we'll drill out that hole, run out to the hardware store, grab the last bolt we need, and then that should be pretty much everything. We just got to refill it with diff fluid and uh, put everything back together. Uh, sway bar is down, obviously. Panar bar is not in, it's over there. So, should be pretty straightforward. Just got back from going to the hardware store. So as you can see, I uh, went ahead and got all these guys lined up real quick. Um, pretty much tightened these. Actually, I don't know if I tightened those down. I gotta double check. And 
what we're gonna do now is drill our holes in here real quick and uh, went ahead and got the right hardware it's a 3 8 by uh, 16 by 16 by 1 so that's what we're gonna go ahead and put in here I don't think we're gonna be able to get this bottom one just due to the way it is but hey, it's whatever so without further ado we're gonna continue on <laughs> And boom, here we are, I'm trying to cut out some of the light. So, as you can see, went ahead and got them both in. I decided to go ahead and get the bottom one in anyway. It was very tight, angled the drill bit a little bit though, and was able to figure it out. So, pretty much we have all our hardware in, and uh, everything seems to be good to go. So, brace is now officially installed. Uh, as you can see, there it is. So what we're gonna go ahead and do now is put everything back together pretty much. We still gotta fill up the differential. That's probably gonna be like the last thing I do. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put the brakes back on, or the panhard bar back in, sway bar back on, and pretty much all this fun stuff. So got a little ways to go, but we're definitely making some progress and we are we should be able to drive this thing today. So I'm gonna try and take this thing for a test drive once I get everything back together and uh, we'll see how it sounds. nice to have everything pretty much buttoned up under here all I got to do is put in diff fluid definitely want to make sure we do that this time just a little FYI for the Eden true track that's in here uh, you do not need friction modifier and it takes 80 weight 90 fluid so just something to be aware of any as you can see right here here's all our extra pieces which normally it's not good to have extra pieces but this is what we got so I have one extra set of half inch bolt and nut. I honestly don't know what this is supposed to be for, whether it's just extra hardware in case you break something or what. Um, not sure what that's for, but I don't have any extra bolt holes or anything like that, so it is what it is. Two aluminum spacers, found out these are supposed to be for the each side if you're not running relocation brackets, you need the spacers in there because this was designed to have relocation brackets run with it. So that's good to know. Um, these are all the extra diff bolts. There should be five, which there are, that go right there. You replace them with studs, put the nuts on, torque everything down, then put the second nuts on for this uh, brace piece right here, torque those down to the same 25 foot-pounds. And then after that, that's really about it. So these are also additional pieces. Um, they go on each of these if you're doing special circumstances that are in the directions that I'm not gonna get into. Actually, I'm pretty sure this one matches up on the back side right there. And this one also goes right there like that. So they probably sit something like that. And that is just to basically take the place of having that diff or having the relocation bracket. So yeah, that's good. Technically we don't have any extra parts then. Sweet. Uh yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw diff fluid in here. Should be pretty simple. We're gonna put our little plug back in 
and drop her down and she should be ready to go. So go ahead and get a nice cold start in here once we get everything back together and we'll be good. <laughs> All we're gonna need to fill up the diff is uh, went ahead and got a pump. Pump been using for years, worked out great. And uh, this is the gear I was talking about, 808.90. And then it's a regular conventional. So they say not to use a synthetic. Not 100% sure why, but after blowing up my last one pretty much, I'm definitely gonna follow them, uh, follow the manufacturer recommendations to a T. Do not wanna deal with this crap again. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, basically pump it up. There's a fill hole in the back, I'll show you real quick. Might be able to see it Oops. right up in there, and uh, that's where we're gonna stick our hose, and we'll be good to go. So let's go ahead and pump it up real quick. So that's going to do it for today's video. I decided I'm going to go ahead and make the test drive its own video. As you can see, right behind me, the car is officially back together, which is awesome. I'm so happy that it's back together. The only thing it needs is it needs to get an alignment. I looked up on uh, Eaton's website about how to break in their differentials because the gears have already been broken in. They've been in the car. Everything is back the same way it was. Um, they pretty much say it doesn't need a break-in period. They're just going to lap together a little bit as, as it drives, and that's about it. So... I'm probably gonna take it easy a little bit uh, for the first little bit just to make sure everything is good. And uh, hey guys, so that's gonna do it for today's video. Appreciate you guys watching. If you have any questions, leave them down below in the comments and I will see you in the next video. Have a great day.